Hi everyone, welcome back to this advanced English conversation between Greg and Mary Daphne. Nice to see you all here today. So we have a fun topic, which is all about how to make friends with native speakers. Mm. Yeah, that's always a, uh, a good thing to do if you're planning to, to really master the language because few people speak the language better than the native speakers. Right, that's not to say to not be friends with people who are not native speakers of the language that you're learning, but there's definitely some benefit to having a few, at least one, person who's a native speaker in that language because of the you know corrective feedback that you can ask them for, right? Asking them to correct you if you say something wrong, um, and also getting that um, listening practice and learning the right intonation and even pronunciation of words and sent and phrases, that kind of thing. Yeah, and it's it's more immersive when it's your friend, right? It's one thing to interact with strangers or to watch yeah. a TV show. Those can be great ways to, to learn the language, um, but to the extent that they become uh, your friend, uh, the, uh, the interaction becomes that much richer. For sure. Uh, and you can really connect and it becomes practical and it just, you retain the learning more effectively. Yeah, when we were both abroad learning different languages, we made friends with people who were from that place and who were native speakers in that language, in addition to expats. And it was really great to have both types of friends. Yeah. So the first tip is to join an acting troupe or an improv group. So improv is improvisation and doing, you know, um, on the spot acting. Which Spontaneous. Is, yeah, improvisation. Yeah. Unplanned acting. <laughs> right, so there's no script, there's no outline. You basically just say yes to everything. So if Greg and I are doing improv, then Greg says, uh, or I'll start. Okay. So, oh, isn't this a lovely beach that we're on right now? It totally is. Uh, the only problem is there's a big wave coming. <laughs> Oh no, we better run in the other direction. Yeah, let's go quickly. Oh shoot, I left my sandals. Oh no, just leave them, let's run. Okay. <laughs> so you get the idea. You say yes to everything and that's the idea. You build on each other. It's really fun because it's all about teamwork and collaboration. And what's cool about joining like an acting group or an improv group in your well, opinion? What I like about it is, um, everyone's a little more open and receptive in these environments, yeah. right? When you're acting, in particular improv, yeah. um, people are gonna be a little goofy, right? No one's a professional. Um, they're trying something new. They're a little bit uncomfortable. It's just like speaking a, a you know a language, a For new sure. language. Yeah, right? you're getting outside of your comfort zone. Getting outside your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a very um, accepting uh, environment to be in. Definitely. Um, and people are having fun. Yeah. Um, so it's it's just a great way to to make a connection with someone um, in in a way that might otherwise feel um, you know challenging. Right. Yeah. And you actually form bonds with these people and real friendships. It's not any like it's not forced. It's not uh, fake. Right. The people who are it, these kinds of um, activities tend to draw people like you were saying who are open minded and you know the creative type. So if that's something that you're interested in, and even if you have no acting experience or anything like that, why not give it a go? It could be really fun, and you might meet your future next best friend. Yeah, th th and there's one other reason I, I, I love this suggestion is yeah. because acting and improv. They bring up context. They bring up scenarios that you might never never think of otherwise. Totally. So you get a very yeah. broad range of exposure mm -hmm. to the language in a way that you might not if you're just using the language in the office, per, for, for example. That's really a good point. You learn so much from these kinds of experiences. Yeah. Um, when I was both in Turkey and in France, I joined acting groups and it was so much fun. And some of my best friends still today are from those times in my life. And it did wonders for my languages, for French and Turkish, and it was just an amazing experience, both of those. So 
I really encourage you to try that approach. Yeah. All right. Are you ready for the next one? I'm ready. So for those of you who want to be, you know, active and outgoing and want to do more of a team sport, then you can look into signing up for a a team sport, um, uh, you know, with other adults mm. that have like a nine to five job. And these tend to, uh, you know, happen after work hours and on the weekend. So it's really amenable to um, people's schedules that have a nine to five. Yeah, I, I think sports are another fantastic uh, environment yeah. for, for building bonds with each other, right? Because it requires teamwork. You have to work together yep. um, and it can also get intense, yeah. right? With sports, there's some competition involved. Um, and so there's emotions as well. Um, and when you get emotions and cooperation and teamwork all combined into one experience, inevitably friendships come out of that. If you ever played sports when you were a kid, mm -hmm. um, you know, probably a number of friends that you made were in fact from playing those sports together. Or, you know, I, when we were uh, in the, on the playground yeah. during school, yeah. right? That's where a lot of friendships are forged. Mm -hmm. um, playing, you know, basketball, soccer, whatever sport it is that, that you played. Yeah, and, and these kinds of friendships start forming organically. Again, not forced. And a lot of times, like on the weekend after a game together, somebody might suggest going out for burgers or something. And then you all get to have that, you know, um, nice little experience, you know, having lunch together or coffee yeah, or something. Exactly. Because maybe while you're playing the sport, there's not much conversation. So you're like, well, this isn't really helping me learn the, the, the language. Yeah. But you're totally right, which yeah. is that... Generally speaking, these activities are paired with some other social activity. Um, and there's interaction before the, the game begins, right? Mm -hmm. Where everyone's sort of catching up. It's as much an excuse to hang out with each other as it is to actually play the sport. Um, and so that that ensures there's going to be plenty of social interaction in addition to playing the sport. For sure. And if you are, you know, um, definitely like think of it as an opportunity to practice your English and thinking it of um, as a way to make friends by asking people about like you taking the first step and maybe mm. asking somebody about their gear or you notice they have a cool water bottle that insulates really well and you might ask them, you know, well, where'd you get that? I really like that. Or yeah. I noticed, you know, your forehand is really strong. Mind showing me, you know, giving me some tips, right? Don't be afraid to make that first step introduce yourself and get the conversation going, right? Don't necessarily think, oh, because they're a native English speaker, they'll, you know, what to know what to say, <laughs> right? A lot of native speakers have their own like reservations about talking to people because they feel shy or they don't know how to make small talk, yeah. right? So you might be the better communicator. So take advantage of that and don't be afraid to, you know, make the first step. Take the first step with that. Absolutely. All right. And the last one is to look for a group um, or a community, so to speak, that really showcases your interests. So, for example, if you're into book club, then try to find a book club on something like Meetup or even like a Facebook group or something where they have in-person meetings or virtual meetings. Um, so thinking about what some of your interests might be, like knitting or I'm just coming up with some random ones, uh, watercolor, I don't know, whatever you can think of that's an interest, cross-country skiing, and try to find a group that would accommodate these kinds of interests of yours. Yeah, and there are a lot of great websites that you can use to help uh, the, the most Famous one at the moment, of course, is Meetup. Yes. Um, right, where you can put in a bunch of different categories that interest you, um, and you'll find all different types of activities and events happening uh, that you can go to and meet people who share the same interests as, as you. And you know, the first two examples that you brought up, right, the the acting group uh, or sport, those are examples of of you know groups that might share an interest with you. And there's so many more than that. So. Yeah. Um, if if you have something that's um, you know that makes you excited to go out and um, 
brings brings you alive, brings out your personality. These are great candidates for uh, a meetup. And so take a look and see what's going on in your area that you can join um, to start to meet people with shared interests. Exactly. And don't be afraid to start your own and, you know, post totally. it and see who comes and tries to, you know, be part of that group. So that's also really cool. And just, you know, be yourself. Take advantage of any sort of fun, cool, new opportunity that might come your way and don't be afraid to use your communication skills and it's okay to make mistakes in you know when you're speaking totally fine native english speakers do it too so yeah just approach it with a positive attitude and be courageous and a big smile <laughs> yeah <laughs> that always helps <laughs> yeah. all right thank you so much for joining us for this awesome advanced english conversation we'll see you next time make sure that you're subscribed with the notification bell turned on. Bye for now.